Hi guys, and welcome to Red Flags, a Twilight podcast. I am going to be jumping in here uh, for uh, the first few episodes at the very beginning. And I also wanted to bring attention to uh, mthg.org, which will also be linked in our Instagram and our Twitter accounts. This is a website sort of highlighting a project going on with the Quileute tribe right now. The first step is relocating the Quileute tribal school. Right now, where they're positioned is pretty sensitive due to things like earthquakes and tsunamis. So they're working on a project that first includes relocating this to a safer place. If you are interested, I would highly recommend looking into, you know, all the information that they have available on that website, even if you're just looking to learn more about the Quileute tribe, as they are featured in the Twilight books, but not necessarily accurately by any means. So yeah, if you're interested in doing that or um, looking into donating or helping out with this cause, highly recommend going to mthg.org. Uh, all right, and let's get into the show. Hello, and welcome back to this Twilight Review podcast that we have yet to name. How about just Twilight Review Podcast? <laughs> it might, might come down to it, honestly. Uh, in this episode, we're going to be reviewing three chapters, the first three chapters, which are First Sight, Open Book, and Phenomenon. And I'm Kate, by the way. Yeah, I'm Jay. also like to say i know that in the last episode we talked about how stephanie meyer's writing that we weren't here to bash her writing style that she is a fine writer and i don't want to say i'm retracting that but this the writing in this book like i think it was her first book <laughs> it yeah. is not like because we said it's very comparable to the way a lot of ya novels are written and it is but not one of the good ones. It doesn't really <laughs> speak to the quality at all. Yeah, reading it through, because uh, we ended up actually reading it out loud to each other and just noticing, reading it the way that this... The <laughs> she reads, I sit and listen and doodle. <laughs> the way that the uh, actual sentences are structured is very awkward and clunky, and I think it makes the read very clunky, even inside your head. And I think that's probably 50% of my issue with it. She I uses think, a lot of adverbs that aren't mm, necessary. Like, yeah. oh, he quickly said this. I smiled vaguely. He what does that flatly. mean? Yeah, that kind of thing. Like, you can and just think, say that it was said. Yeah. I think, I, I know that this was a writing tip in the past, but I think it probably came back to prominence at this point. There's nothing wrong with adverbs. Sometimes you just gotta know when to use them and when not to, and they were not always used in great places. Uh, but let's jump into chapter one, First Sight, with our lovely Bella moving from Phoenix to Forks. So... Bella, I want to say, from the get-go, is probably the most negative person ever to live she in a really fictional is. world. She is just the biggest Debbie Downer, like, oh, I made this decision to go live with my dad, and oh, I'm going to complain about it internally the whole time, and I'm going to lie half-heartedly to make people think I'm happy. Like, Even though it was she's my mis- choice to come here. Like, above all- My idea, not my choice. My idea. Mm -hmm. I decided that, hey, you know what, mom? I'm gonna do you a solid. Go with your baseball playing boyfriend or husband or whatever he is. And I'm gonna go live where it rains all the time. And I'll be totally happy there. But I'm gonna complain to the reader about everything. Oh my gosh, it's snowing, so it's not raining anymore. Uh, I hate the cold. (laughs) Oh, wow, I almost got hit by a car. Get over it, girl. Like, (laughs) we'll get there. But yeah, overall, Bella, from the get-go, she's super negative about everything. She she just doesn't have anything good to say about anybody. She immediately dogs on her dad, Charlie, who she will not call dad. That is so disrespectful. But she's immediately down on her dad. She's down on her mom. She seems to think that she has a parental role in their relationship, when very clearly she doesn't. She doesn't buy her own car. She doesn't pay to put gas in it on her own. She doesn't talk about getting a job. She doesn't pay for her own plane ticket. She's not emotionally the adult either. Like, she has this sort of high and mighty 
because she likes to cook. Yeah, she's the she, adult. she likes to cook. So, and she assumes that she knows what's best for her mom because she she has this perception that oh, my mom will stay with me, but I can tell that she wants to go with her boyfriend. So I'm gonna remove myself from the equation because I know that that's what's best for it. And it's just like you don't know what's best for it. You made that decision on your own, and now you're gonna be kind of resentful about it. Yeah. And it's just I like a spoiled little teenage, you know, pain. Yes. Uh, and I think, I think too, like back in the day when I first read this, I think that's probably what appealed to me a lot because I remember being a teen- teenager and perceiving myself to, I don't know, I don't be say, more than you were at the yeah, time. I don't want to say that I thought I knew everything because I definitely don't think I did. I think I was very insecure as a t- as a tween and as a teen. But I definitely remember this association of myself as like ultimately whatever I was doing was for the greater good in some way when it was mostly just narcissistic. Yeah, and that's part of growing up. And I mean... She nailed that one. Stephanie Meyer nailed that attribute on the head, perhaps a bit too much. And I understand as someone with separated parents, the feeling of like, oh, like I'm going to be bounced back and forth. So like, I kind of know what's best because they didn't know what was best. When in reality, you are still, (laughs) I don't care if you're 16, 17, 18, you are still just a child. I'm 23 years old right now. I still call my mom and ask for her advice on, Mm -hmm. oh, I ripped a pair of jeans. How do I sew those back together? Like, oh, I, what temperature do you cook chicken at? Like, yeah, that kind of thing. And you're always stuff. You're never going to know everything. And and neither are your parents and that's okay. But that Bella's just miserable about it. She's just miserable about it. And she goes to Forks expecting to hate all of her time there. She expects not to enjoy her time with her dad at all. Expecting. I would say she's more determined to hate hate everything. Mm -hmm. Which I guess goes into like, she's a very stubborn person, which I guess I can appreciate to a certain extent. Because she decides that she's going to hate Edward later on. She decides (laughs) that she, you know, at the end of the book when we get there, she decides that she wants to be a vampire. She's a very, like when she sets her mind to how she's going to feel about something, how she's going to do something, Thing. She's just very stubborn about it, and I think we can see that a little bit here where she's already pretty much determined to find the negative in whatever she's doing in Forks. I can appreciate that a little bit because especially at that at the age that I was reading this, I was gosh, I don't even want to think about how old I was. It was a while ago. I was young. I was in like middle school. I was very stubborn and I went through a phase where it's kind of like, obviously you know that you don't know everything because you're in school. So like, how could you know everything if you're in school? But there is just that feeling of like, oh, I don't need someone to tell me what to do. I don't need someone else to make decisions for me. I'm adult enough at the age of 12 to make my own decisions. And that's how Bella is. And granted, she's like 17, so it's a bit of an age difference. Uh, she just seems like she's very <laughs> she's very determined to have made up her mind already because that's what she thinks adults do. Almost. Without even being in the town for over two, three, how many years has, did she say it had been? A while, like A at while. least two or three years. Mm-hmm. And then when she gets, she arrives to Forks, she, well, she arrives to Washington and she describes that it's like, you have to go north and then come back down or something like that. And she, she hates how arduous it is. It's like, that's travel, baby. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Because from from Arizona up to Washington, like, the nearest airport is north of where Forks is. And then they have to drive back down south. And she's super irritated Mm -hmm. that they have to go, like, an hour further north. But I'm like, that's small town living girl. Mm -hmm. Like, so she gets in the car with her dad. She immediately talks about how she hates the police cruiser. And she hates driving in it and being seen in it. And I, I, I think, too, that we'll see a little bit more later too like bella is the type of person it seems that she she wants to like fit in but also not be noticed yep and that definitely like you can see that there even then where it's, she's she doesn't want to be seen in a police car because everybody knows already who she is or at least she thinks that at that she's moment, very self-centered yes yes <laughs> she is <laughs> She starts talking about how she has to buy her own car, and Charlie mentions that he has already bought her a car. She is immediately skeptical of this, despite- Not- (laughs) Wow, thanks, Dad. I have no responsibilities, and you bought me a car. That's- (laughs) Raise your hand if your parents ever bought you a car. No hands are raised. (laughs) Wow. Weird continue i'm just so i was so peeved mm-hmm. at the way she handled well, that she's so skeptical of it immediately she's like how old is it Who yeah because charlie and bought it so there's no way it could be good it enough can't be for good. her but then she sees it and immediately loves it 
And it's like, maybe you don't know what's best for you, Bella. Maybe you don't know. It's also really funny that she's like, oh yeah, no one will notice me in this big, like, orange hunk of junk rusting truck that takes up three parking spaces <laughs> and then she pulls in and people notice her and it's like <laughs> i kid you not every time she's driving it she talks about how loud the engine is and it's like you thought that this was <laughs> gonna be less conspicuous <laughs> makes huh? me think of my first car that sounded like an airplane taking off and so landing my first car oh my gosh uh, a james ford, a ford f-150 Oh, I was thinking James, the Jimmy. Mm -hmm. The Jimmy was loud too, but for Jimmy had its own charm. She gets the car and she immediately loves it despite being so skeptical of it. And she's excited to go to school, which is the next day for some reason. Like she didn't give herself any time. Yeah, because like now here's the thought. Even when you move in for college, they give you like two days. A couple days, yeah. Even as an upperclassman, I think like two days mm -hmm. before we started classes to settle in. Maybe I'm wrong. Freshman got four. Do you know anyone who has ever moved and been like, I'm gonna make sure I move literally so I'm not getting in until the afternoon right before my classes start. Right, and she's like, I'm just gonna go to school tomorrow immediately. And she goes to school. Like we said in the last episode, Everybody immediately likes her for no reason. I think the first person- She's the most miserable person. I would hate this girl if I ever met her. I'd be- Like, she- Her attitude would not have flown no. in our school. The first person she meets is Eric. She starts off by describing that he looks like he belongs in a chess club, which I assume is her nice way of saying he looks like a nerd. He also- and She also calls him, like- Oh, yeah, like an oil slick. Yes, yes. oil slick. Mm -hmm. And I'm she, like, that's so mean. She's just so mean to him. And then when she's talking to him, she- sarcastically remarks that her mom is part albino and when he doesn't get it she thinks she's the only person in the world capable of sarcasm and now I, and she doesn't go like oh i was just joking to give him the opportunity to go oh haha ha. she leaves him thinking so now day one this girl is already a pathological liar like she's her she own hates brand her parents of she's miserable it's just not a good look bella it's really not <laughs> Uh, and then she, the first person she meets is Eric, and then she meets Jessica, whose name she doesn't know until lunch. But she doesn't remember her, which I'm like, alright, it's your first day, I'll give it to you. Mm -hmm. But then, and I'm jumping ahead a little bit, but I want to make sure it's said and yeah. I don't forget. But then, after like, day two, she's like, I know everyone's names now. And by week two, she's like, I know everyone's names in the whole school. And I'm like, bull. I don't Absolutely believe you. There's not. no way. Mm -hmm. I get the impression. Oh, that's another thing. I get the impression Stephanie Meyer did not go to a small school. I don't think because so. Because she says that, you know, there are only 300 people in the school, which I'm like, okay, fine. That is a small there school. were like 70 something kids in our graduating class so mm. like i get going to a small school we probably had under a thousand kids in our whole school system yes so in our high school we probably had between, maybe three or four hundred max yeah, between 400 and 500 i think our because our class was small the class below ours was so much larger than ours i think that's the only reason i would say it's probably above 400 yeah so I, we get what it's like to go to a small school. She's talking about building three, building six, building four. If you've ever gone to a school with under a thousand kids, you know that there are not multiple buildings. This is yeah, not, this is not a, campus. a campus. And she's just like talking about how there, there are at least six buildings because she mentions a building six. I don't know exactly how many buildings there are. If it's just a bunch of sheds with one classroom That's in each one. That's what I'm picturing because she's like, oh, building four. Great. I walked in. I was in my classroom and i'm like there's not like a room number like is this just is this like a portable like it's are like these this, just trailers one classroom buildings it's like did they just buy a bunch of houses and go this is good Let's she not doesn't think about this. she doesn't describe the campus at all there no. is no way to know what bella is walking in they're just to. physically on a campus and there's a gazebo somewhere and that's about all we know but she so she goes to i think Spanish, trig, and gym, maybe, are her, like, first three classes before lunch, which seems like a very small amount of classes to have before lunch, just from my... Maybe they do blocks. Maybe. I, it depends how long. I. She says that bio was an hour at one point, so I think all of her classes are an hour, so she's going into school at 7.30 and then having lunch at, like, 11. I, okay, I remember we had to do the lunch cycles, mm -hmm. and if you were unlucky, you would lunch at, like, 11.30-ish. Mm -hmm. 
And, and if just, you were really lucky, you would lunch at one. Mm -hmm. And by the time you were done, like your day was almost over. Almost done. It was a disaster after lunch. If you had the late lunch, though, forget learning anything. <laughs> it was a disaster before. We had classes where like you would go to the beginning half of the class. Oh, if you yeah. had first lunch, you had it before like fifth, fifth period. period. If you had third lunch you had it after fifth period but if you had it second lunch it broke up one of your classes so like one year i went to a math class i don't remember which one and i went in would do like 20 minutes of the class would leave eat lunch and have to come back for like 30 minutes of the class and it was horrible there's no way anybody learned anything in that half hour no after. because the first 20 minutes of class you're just like i can't wait to go to lunch and mm -hmm. sit with my friends and then the second half you're just like i just had lunch and got all pumped up with my friends <laughs> like i'm you're not doing not anything paying, you're not paying it <laughs> anyway but she has she has a weirdly early lunch unless there's just a class she didn't mention and then she, or goes, she came late she goes to lunch immediately the cullens are on her radar she describes them, I think, as the most gorgeous group of people she's ever seen. Oh, she's in all of them. Oh, no. She's yes, like, exactly. come over here, Collins. Let me <laughs> right all over your faces. <laughs> she's Love like, it. let me at whichever one I can get my hands on first. And it just happened to be Edward. And that's the only reason that they're together. Oh, my God. Basically. Probably. And so she sees the Collins and immediately, even though she doesn't know Jessica's name yet, asks her who they are. Jessica explains, these are the Collins. They are a adopted siblings from like a 20 year old doctor <laughs> which is really like, weird that a 20 something year old doctor wants adult children well if you think like, about it too because we're assuming too that this is the extremely unlikely coincidence that he's in his mid-20s and he just barely adopted teenagers and everyone's okay with that like that to well, me that doesn't make sense because there's an adoption process there's a process to go through when you want to adopt a child. Yeah, and he got all of them at the same time. Mm -hmm. All five. They're all like, five. yeah, you got the income for and it. two of them You're are a twins. doctor. And, like, to be fair, it sounds like they live very extravagantly. She describes their clothes, how they're, like, borderline designer and all expensive, da 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 And I'm just like, doctors, don't get me wrong, they make good money. But to dress five teenagers in designer clothing on top of a mortgage and a marriage is a lot. And they describe that... Um, um, two of them, Jasper and Rosalie Hale, are supposed to be Esme's. They're her, like, her sister's kids or her oh, yeah. nieces and nephews or mm -hmm. something. And like, they're, like, Something happens, so twins. she got custody of them. But I'm looking, and I'm like, these kids are, like, 18. They shouldn't mm -hmm. need anyone to have custody. No. Because she, she says that Edward is the one who looks the youngest, too. And he, when he died and became a vampire, was 17 as well. So no, none of them are under 18. Why do they go to school? Like, why don't they just all pretend to be young adults living together? They I look think this pretty is much a, the same age as Carlisle. I think this is just an age-old question because it doesn't make any sense to anybody <clears throat> except the Collins and nobody like, will ever Car know. Carlisle is just cool with dragging these kids around for like a century without them paying rent or working or contributing in any meaningful way. Just, just outright like, supporting cool. these hundred year old adults mm -hmm. and they go to college because edward i know this is in midnight sun i think i remember him saying he has two medical degrees where are they getting the money to go to college to get a doctorate twice well for they one change, of they one change of their, their identities every time one of their children it's just like I don't that's know. another thing so they move around a lot do they change their names is edward's name even edward is exactly. their last name cullen like what was edward's original last name i want to know now. and like do they change their last name every time they move does no one notice that they are committing mass fraud across yeah, the country like, i know that it's like a big thing that edward and alice are really i know that jasper and carlisle also have their own like quote-unquote powers but everybody else who doesn't have powers their power is tax evasion that's their power that's yeah. it <laughs> She immediately notices the Collins, and she's like staring at them hardcore. Edward stares back, and she's like, oh my god, a boy is looking at me. Weird. And then Jessica's like, Edward Collins looking at you. <laughs> yeah, and he just looks obvious. confused. Like, he's not looking like, oh wow, she's so pretty, I'm into it. He's looking at her like, what is this chick? Like, why? <laughs> <laughs> why, is, why can't I read her mind? But... She, he's just looking confused as far as she's concerned. He looks dis she says he looks dissatisfied like he had some expectation that wasn't met. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, she's story like, of my life, girl. I know the feeling. <laughs> 
Did she comments on the Cullens' names all being older names? Oh, that's another thing. She doesn't remember any of her actual friends' names. Her friend lists the Cullens from across the room perfectly. once. She remembers all of their names perfectly. Bella is a bad friend. She's a bad friend. And she comments on how their names are all old-fashioned, despite her name being Isabella. Also, like, Jasper. Not, not that old. Alice. Not. Not that bad. I've heard of- I know someone named Alice. Yeah. Emmett, not a super- the only one is Edward. Edward is the old-fashioned name. And even then, Edward is a pretty common name. Yeah, it's, like, <laughs> it's an old-fashioned name, but it's also a pretty common name. Like, you know what I mean? Well, and it's just like, the people that you know that have kids, when they name kids names that are old-fashioned, or names that are kind of out there, very unique, do they give just one kid an old-fashioned or a unique name, or do they give it to all of them? Right, exactly. It's like, you're not gonna name one of your kids, like, Vladimir, and and the other one, Steven. These are my this, two normal children. These are my children. children. Apple, Seven, and Steven. Like, oh you give it to all of them. Yeah, she, she just comments on their name. She comments on them not eating their lunch at all, which I'm like, are the counselors not concerned? Is nobody concerned that the Cullens consistently buy lunch and don't eat it? I mean, another thing too is in high school, and this is not the healthy choice, people, so don't do this. I never ate lunch in high school. I never ate breakfast or lunch. I fasted until dinner. No one cared. But no one mentioned raise... anything. No one noticed anything. It's not unusual to sit there without a lunch tray in front of you. But a lot they of have kids lunch have. trays in front of them, and that's like part of it. Yeah, Is but why? Jessica, <laughs> Jessica comments on it, and Bella comments on it, that they just never eat their lunch. And I'm like, if all of you know this, and you've observed this... Like, where is, what, what is the conclusion you have drawn because of that? There is never they don't look underfed. They look beautiful and curvy. They look perfect. Yeah. And it's just like one of those things where I'm like, why, what is even the point of putting on that kind of shot? I, I know that the Cullens think that they're being very like secretive and protective of their own family, but you'd think for people who have spent at least a century for most of them stuck in high school and college, they'd pick up on the fact that you don't need lunch in the lunchroom to look normal or go unnoticed. Something that's important, looking at each other and talking, yeah. that's normal. They sit there silently, not looking at each other at all, mm -hmm. and just sit there. There's... And everyone's like, oh my god, that makes them sexy and mysterious. And I'm like, no, that makes them weird. <laughs> like, I, th That's I... weird. I would assume that that's a cult right there. Like, a young father adopting five children who don't talk to each other normally in lunch. They don't eat lunch, anything like that. And sometimes, I know that later on, Bella comments that they're laughing when she looks over, but only once. And I think I remember this from Midnight Sun, that it's specifically because Alice says that Bella is about to look over, so they should all laugh and look like they're talking. Are you so serious? Why don't they just talk? Why don't they just talk normally? I don't know, I guess after a couple hundred years with some people, you're like, I am so sick of this family. Four of them are in love. Like, <laughs> you have nothing That's to That's another about. thing. So, they live in the same house. They're adopted siblings. Four of them are dating. That's, like, really weird. Yeah. That's, like, really, really weird. And nobody mentions anything about that. Because I feel like at that point, that could also be considered, like, a form of child abuse to allow people who are growing up as siblings to date each other. I think that might be a form of child abuse in real life. Well, if there were legal documents, but we know there aren't. Right, but it's just like one of those things where it's like, if the story is that they're adopted children, why is nobody checking into that? I'm just saying. <laughs> It's just really weird. And all the other kids are just like, yeah, it's kind of weird, but like, that's just what they do. And it's accepted. And I'm like, if this happened, she clearly never went to a small school. No. Because Gossip if this happened in our school, oh lord. No, they would be all anybody could talk about. The gossip would fly. It would just be insane. But I guess, I guess that's just forks for you. Uh, so she goes to bio. She goes to bio. And guess and he's sitting next to her. Edward. Well, she, so he's the only seat that is left available. And she's like, oh, okay, this will be good because I kind of think he's cute. And then he gives her this stank face look <laughs> and she describes it as he thinks that I smell bad. And I don't know why she comes to that exact conclusion, where she gets that idea, but it's what she's going with. She's like, he just thinks I smell horrible. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, 
quite the opposite, I guess. But yeah, why would you assume that that's the one thing and not that, oh, this loner kid is upset to have his lone table taken over by somebody. Or he's just weird. He's like just he's weird just kid. from a really weird family. That's why this seat was left empty. Or why wouldn't you just think like he's just kind of a weird dude, like doesn't eat at lunch, doesn't talk to other people. Everyone you've talked to is like, yeah, he doesn't talk to anyone, doesn't have friends. Like he's just a weird dude. That's the kind of kid Edward would be. He's weird. He's like the type of kid that used to corner me on the school bus on the way home. Yup. Um, but she thinks that, yeah, she just assumes that he thinks that she smells. Mike is also in this class because he comes up to her right after. She calls him a golden retriever. She's very mean. But yeah, Edward zooms out of the room as soon as everything is done. She, the class- Like sits as far away from her mm -hmm. as he possibly can at their lab table the whole class, which is hilarious. And she's just like, but my hair smells like strawberries, so I don't understand what the problem is. She doesn't really describe Who's anything- using strawberry shampoo at that age? This girl. What are you using? Like, is this the no tears <laughs> brand? <laughs> really? Um, but she, she smells her own hair. She puts up that little wall that's like, I think it's very like popular to, as an image of like putting up a wall of hair between them. Cause I remember that for some reason. Really? Yeah. Cause she like lets her hair fall in between them. And that's like one of the, one of the okay, iconic Okay. Let scenes. me sit here. I'm going to mm. let my hair fall in between us. It doesn't do anything. That doesn't make sense. It's just hair. It's just hair. And that's, so my hair is parted to the side. This is the side with more hair. Let's do the side with less hair. <laughs> Great. You can still see my face. What is she holding her hair up? Like covering her face, tying a bow in front of it. This is, they're She's both the weird stupid. Kid. They're both the weird kid. And Bella is definitely the, Bella is the kid you don't want to sit next to. Forget mm -hmm. the vampires. Let them drink you. I don't care. Stay away from people like Bella though. So <laughs> the class ends. Edward is gone. He yeets out of there. <laughs> Yeet? He yeets out of there. He's done. He's over it. And Bella is still like kind of like, oh, the popular kid who doesn't I like- I smell. Who doesn't like anybody else, who doesn't talk to anybody else, also doesn't want to talk to me. I wonder why. Like, I don't know why she thought this was such a big deal, to be honest. But- I probably would have just been like, wow, he's a weird dude, mm -hmm. and wouldn't have given it a second thought. Exactly. Told my friends, hey, you know that guy? He's weird. And that's pretty much it. Stay away. Yeah. She meets Mike. She doesn't like Mike, but she's friendly with him. Yeah. She's just a miserable human she's being. Just mean. I just hate I her. Know. So my notes, we made notes for this. Yeah. She has like four note cards. Mine says Bella sucks, Edward sucks. I hate Bella. <laughs> and that's how it goes. That is the end of chapter one. Uh, and then the next chapter is open book. It starts out with her saying that school was better because she's getting the hang of things. She's finally remembering everyone's names. But she also says that it's worse because Edward isn't there. She's met him once. And this I can understand because I remember in middle school and high school deciding that I had a crush on a boy because I feel like, okay, I don't know if this is anybody else's experience in middle school, but you decide that you have crushes on people. You don't develop them. You you just go, oh, this boy is sort of attractive. For our small I town, guess. this boy, best I'm gonna get here. And I'll just, you know, I'll just say and tell all my friends that I have a crush on this boy and he's going to become the boy that I'm obsessed with this year. And that, that to me is how this reads, is that this is the boy that Bella's like, oh, he's the most attractive person in this school that I have a class with. I'm gonna decide to have a crush on him now. <gasps> yeah, like people do stuff like that where it's like, oh, people are like, what do you like? And you're like, I can't just say no one. Mm -hmm. Cause then like, they're gonna think I I'm don't weird. like anyone. Yeah. yeah, like I guess him, like I sure. I guess he's the one, yeah. And girl, you picked wrong. But he's not in school. He doesn't end up being in school, I think for a couple of weeks. I know we said we'd look into it last time when we were recording this. I don't remember how long he was out of school for. It's not important. He's just gone for a while and she's like, it kind of sucks, but also life is great. Like I'm getting comfortable here. I'm remembering my friends' names. I don't have to worry about smelling bad. <laughs> she's just living her greatest life. Yeah, a lot of it is just how she can't be bothered to care about the people who are interested in her too. Finally, 
gaining traction with all of them but then she's like chess club eric and golden retriever mike and this and that she's just like she's so mean to them for no reason without them knowing it yeah none of them even know they all think that she's a nice quiet girl when in reality she's just judging all of them the reason she doesn't have friends is because she sucks because she's judgy i also love that it points out at one point so we all know well a lot of us know that edward drives a volvo and as two people who have read the book before that's something you cannot escape missing like you cannot not notice that he drives a volvo because it's mentioned every single time they say anything about his car edward drives a volvo i don't know what our obsession is with volvos I don't know if that's what was in style at the time, like, but, um, I don't know if that's just what the obsession was at the time or what, but I love how, like, Edward's not at school anymore. His, his fake siblings are still going to school. They're still taking his Volvo to school. They're not driving their own cars. They're, like, still taking just his car. And if you've read the books before, you know that they all have their own car. They just take Edwards everywhere anyway. I'm like... They're just like, guys, what are you doing? What are you doing? Like, Edward's not going to school. They all have their own cars. They're still just going to take his car to school, though. They're like, actually, the Volvo's full of gas, so we're still going to do that one. Also, Bella... It's on Carlisle's dime anyway, so... It doesn't matter. Bella also mentions, I think... I think it's this chapter how she has to think about putting gas into her truck once again bella is not the financially or emotionally like charged adult that she thinks she is because she doesn't know how to pay for her own gas because she thinks about going to seattle in her truck and whether or not it could handle going to seattle on a tank of gas she doesn't know anything about how much gas her truck can fit and like to be fair it's a new truck but also like it's been at it's least been a week. like it's been at least a week or two you haven't thought about filling your tank at all you haven't filled it you haven't worried charlie about it. gave it to you on a full tank of gas like yeah she talks about volleyball at one point how and we just get another glimpse of how clumsy she is which is supposed to be endearing i think i don't know why it's supposed to be so endearing that she's some weak little girl that can barely walk straight without a guy grabbing her to steady her right it's just like it's i don't know it gets annoying to me at least but it's not endearing it's annoying Mm -hmm. it's (laughs) annoying and it's like okay like i understand having balance issues i'm not the most the most graceful but like she just really overplays it and i'm just like girl i've known how to walk since i was like a year old mm-hmm. figure it out well she mentions in volleyball the only time that she ever manages to hit the ball other than when she's serving she hits somebody else in the face and this is supposed to be endearing so she's aiming for them yeah she, she hits, hits like, them the in the face every time, time like i i don't understand it all i got hit in the face by a volleyball <laughs> in, <laughs> in middle school <laughs> and i wear glasses oh my God. and they broke in half Oh, I man. did not find the person that hit the ball at me endearing, let me tell you. <laughs> I wasn't like, oh, you sweet little, like, big football player. He was cute, too. Like, I remember thinking this kid was cute. Him hitting me in the face with a ball didn't make me think he was cuter. It actually retracted some of the feelings I had of, like, oh, you're a decent guy to, like, I'm gonna stay away from you now because you can't be trusted because you just tried to break my face in half pile (laughs) trove of volleyball he broke my glasses i had to tape them for like two weeks before i could go get an appointment and then it took like another two weeks for the glasses to come in i had them taped in between for like a month you were that kid i was that kid he made me that kid that's not endearing bella it's not it's not not cute (laughs) but i forgot about that (laughs) She emails her mom, which, uh, for as much, like, space as it takes up on the page, is very boring. I think it's to get across the point that her mom is kind of a hoverer, but uh, it doesn't But she still thinks she's the adult. Her mom's a hoverer. She's a helicopter parent. Yes. But Bella still somehow is like, but I'm the adult and she's the child Mm -hmm. because... I'm 17 and have had zero babies and have raised zero humans. And I have no responsibilities, so I know where her dry cleaning is. I don't even know how to put gas in the car that my daddy just bought me. Uh, and then she Who I call Charlie, because I'm an adult. And then she cooks for her dad. She makes a comment about how he can't cook much more than bacon and eggs. I'm like, how has he been living alone if he can't cook for himself, Bella? I think you're just projecting. She makes a big commotion about how she shops at the thriftway and she loves it. <laughs> and then... Oh, this is where Wuthering Heights comes into play. And I I don't know where I got the idea that it's her favorite book. She just says that she's read it before. 
So I don't know, in my mind, I think I- She says it over and over so she can seem superior to the people who are learning it now. And I'm like, you're in a different school than them. Like that happens. You know what? Last year, they probably read books you had never heard of. But yeah, she, she talks about Wuthering Heights and I guess that's where that ties in. I don't know if it comes in later, but I think that in my mind, I must have played it up a lot more because I noticed the name of the book because it was an odd book. And then she asks, her dad about the Collins at dinner and he has a lot to say he is charlie's got some deep emotions about the Collins. he goes off because she she wants to talk about how she doesn't really like edward and he immediately launches into how nice dr cullen is and how great he is and how attractive he is and after bella's like wow you know Edward's all the kids are really attractive and charlie's like you should see the doc yeah. It's a good thing he's married. A lot of young women would be snapping up his tree like turtles or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he like, he's very... <laughs> something along those he lines. Says something weird. Paraphrasing, but... <laughs> That's the gist of it. <laughs> but he he is very passionate about how great like all the Collins are. He thinks that they're, you know, they're so good and they don't cause trouble, so that makes them even better. Oh, he's and the chief of police, that, by the way. Yes, and everybody just needs to leave them alone because everybody still talks about them even though there's nothing wrong with them. Despite the fact that he's friends with Billy Black... Which we've established. Who he's, hates, who the, hates Collins. the Collins? They have like a whole treaty against the Collins. Well, maybe that's who he's talking about. Because mm -hmm. he thinks it's just because they're newcomers, when in reality it's because they suck people's blood. And they're maybe. weird. But yeah, he's he, he just has a lot to say about the Collins. And I'm it's like, a lot to this say is, about Mr. Collins' attractiveness. I know, I'm like, this is a bisexual household. That's all I'm going to say because Bella thinks everybody's super attractive. And so doesn't her dad, apparently. Although he doesn't say anything about the children, obviously. Why would yeah, he? Yeah, that's, that's fair. He, he says something about the doctor. Who is still supposed to only be 20, so, like, that's still a little... Pretty young, Charlie. All creepy. right. Charlie's like, I'll have that doctor In his money. 20s. Not 20 exactly, but in his 20s. Which, I guess, isn't that bad, because if he's, like, 28, I'm assuming Charlie's around, like, 40, 45, Yeah, you that's know? not horrible. Between 40 for, and 50. Like, older, older people. For um, old people. <laughs> <laughs> well, older. Like, I don't know. If it's a difference of 10 years when you're, like... 14 and 24 that's a big difference problem. even like 24 like, and 34 but kind it's of like a big if you're difference. 28 and 38 not that big a deal at least to me but well whatever. as long as you're in the same stage of life yes. i feel like it's yeah. you know uh and then i have an age thing but oh yeah it's snowing the next day <laughs> oh and bella is so cranky about it yeah, it starts snowing the next day while they're at school, and Mike wants to start a snowball fight. Bella is miserable. So she gets to school, <laughs> and her friends want to have a snowball fight, and she's all, meh, I don't like snow. And they're like, well, have you ever seen it? And she's like, no. I'm sorry. I know. I went to college with a couple people that had never seen snow before. Their first time seeing snow, I am so glad I was present for it. Like, they were so happy mm -hmm. because they've never seen it before. Typically, people who have never seen snow before are kind of amazed by it. They treat it like a novelty, usually. Yeah, and then, like, you know, once you've been going to college in the snow for a couple months, they're like, all right, I get it. I hate this crap. I'm over it. But, like, Bella's first time seeing snow, and she can't even try to find anything good about it. And I'm just like, everybody around you is so excited. It's the first snowfall of the year. Everybody just wants to have fun. And you're like, I just want to get to class without getting wet, guys. I just want to go to volleyball, which I hate, too, but I want to be dry while i'm doing it i just want to be dry in this stupid town that is always wet that i hate that i knew was always wet while i was moving here but on the same so day negative it's so <laughs> annoying now i know how my parents felt about me when i was a kid because my parents always used to say like you're so negative and i'd be like whatever like little preteen like thanks whatever i'm you're negative how about that and i'm like oh my god i would pray i, I don't have a child like me if i was this negative <laughs> Jeez, right. um. uh and then the same day that it is snowing edward returns she is flabbergasted that oh he has returned god. to school yeah she can't believe it because like, she just she actually had this thought of like maybe he just dropped out or something and i'm like that's it bella he dropped out because of you because you smelt bad and all of his siblings are still there all of his siblings are gonna continue to go like they're not moving or anything he's just done <laughs> the youngest one of all of them he took one whiff and he was <laughs> i'm dropping out 
<laughs> I forget it. I'm gonna go get some. I will not sit next to the smelly kid. <laughs> He's like, I forget about it. I'm just gonna go get a part time job that I don't care about because I hate how you smell that much. I'm gonna go work at Dick's Sporting Goods. <laughs> yeah, like what? What did don't you Don't need think an he education. Was doing? <laughs> like, what did you think, Bella? But she, he comes back. She sees him in the lunchroom. All the Cullens are also laughing with the snow. It's like melting sexily in their hair or whatever. They're ice cold. How is the snow melting exactly. in their hair? That is my they God. are the same temperature as it. They're cold. Exactly. They don't have blood running through their bodies. And yet the snow melts. And I'm like, I'll, I'm willing to chalk it up to the fact that they are inside. But, it but just they just walked track. inside. It doesn't because track. their cafeteria is a separate building as well. Mm -hmm. So when they say they just walked in the cafeteria, I'm assuming they're coming from straight, straight from outside. Mm -hmm. And they're already, you know, it's already melting. And I'm like, guys. Also, you like, just got to school. Why are you at lunch already? I'm like, did they run to the bathroom and like put their head underneath a hand dryer? And they're just like, oh, please, please melt. Make it look normal. <laughs> like, what did they, why? How did it melt? How? Explain it to me. But Bella is really upset about this. She cannot shut up about it. She is just so upset. She asked Jessica about it. She feels sick and only gets a soda because she sees him. Because soda is going to make you feel better. Exactly. I hope it's and a ginger her ale. Her friends are genuinely concerned about her too. They're like, are you feeling okay? And she's just like, oh my god, it's so annoying how oh my concerned god. they are. I don't even know your name. <laughs> it's just like, I don't even know you. You are a stranger to me. I could care less if you were an aunt. Why would you ever ask me if I'm feeling okay? Like she's Obviously so I'm not. Mean. I'm in this stupid town that I hate. She's so mean to them. And so in her head, all internally. Externally, she's like I'm okay, thanks. Yeah, she's like, this I'm is good. all an internal monologue of like, I don't remember this girl's name. It took me six weeks to know your the first letter of it. Like I will never know the name of your child if you have one. Like she's just like, I don't care about your Facebook baby. But I expect everyone to call my child by her given name that I gave her. And she so she goes to bio and he's there and she's like oh god he's gonna think i smell bad again he's actually very polite to her he's like hi i'm edward you must be bella immediately she's like why didn't you call me isabella and i'm like dude you are clocking this dude too hard and right he's now. like do you not like don't you like to be called bella and she's like yeah but i think charlie must tell everyone my name is isabella because that's what everyone calls me and edward's like Oh, it turns, looks away, and then she's like, oh my god, like, I made things awkward, and I'm like, yeah, you did, but you know in Edward's mind, he's thinking, crap, crap, she's on to me, crap, crap, I shouldn't have read those people's names and assumed her name, I should have just asked. In his mind, he's in, like, threat level midnight is what's going on in Edward's mind. Meanwhile, she's like, oh my god, my hair Oh my god, do I still fast. smell? My hair smells like strawberries, he must be allergic. Like, what did you think, Bella? And so she, she's so self-centered she immediately questions why he would know her name is bella despite the fact that everybody said that they were waiting on her arrival and it, everybody already knew her before she came and then he Maybe. says that and she's like oh that can't be it that's <laughs> also a really weird thing the whole town was waiting for you <laughs> like he's like okay oh. weirdo <laughs> it's like all right guys edward cool. if a guy like edward comes up to you i want you all to run please <laughs> I think the one interesting part of this scene is that we do actually find out more about like why she left Phoenix because she doesn't really explain it at all in the beginning of the book. Yeah. And she finally does. She divulges this to Edward and I kind of wonder if this goes back to um, how you were talking about like in the Seattle scene from what you remember. She describes everybody as being compelled. Yeah. If she herself is also compelled, which I think might come up a little bit later. I can't exactly remember. But I wonder I think if it just has to do with the way he looks at her. I think he's just intimidating. Yeah, I and think, like, like makes you want to talk. It just happens to be one of those things where she considers herself to be babbling, but she's like in a way also being compelled to talk, despite the fact that she's not affected by his mind reading power. Yeah, I don't think he can control people. I think I he's think just so, so no. pretty that yeah. they're like, all right, I'll tell you whatever you want to know, handsome. Mm -hmm. Including the nurse, which we'll find out way later, I think. 
But yeah, so she she actually does end up telling him a little bit more about why she decided to move from Phoenix to Forks. And she talks about how her her stepfather Yeah, her stepfather is a baseball player. Is a baseball player. And she makes like this very like dismissive comment about how he's only in Little League so he can't be that good. Oh yeah, because uh, Edward's like, "Oh, that's cool. Anyone I would know and or, or would have heard of." And she's like, "No, he's not that good. He only plays Little League." And I'm like, "All right, to be fair, you still need skill." You have to be decent. You have to be a good baseball player to play. Blo- I couldn't play little league. Right, like it's not like the, you pick up a bat. And, and I go. used to play softball. Yes. I'm not little league material. We find out that she made the decision herself to leave because, in her eyes, she could see that her mom wanted to travel with the boyfriend, even though she didn't do it and wasn't going to unless Bella left because she's a good mom. But Bella took it on herself to make herself seem like the martyr. And then she's smart and bio. Yeah, then she's like, oh yeah, I'm gonna prove Edward stupid because I know all of these slides that were identifying like the different phases of the a cell. It's like anaphase, metaphase, prophase, prophase. like separating. And yeah, she metamorphosis. Just, for some reason, she she feels the need to constantly prove that she's better than everybody else, but while at the same time being like, I don't want to stand out. I hope nobody notices me because I don't notice them. Even though she's immediately like, why did you call me Isabella? Why did you do this? Why did you do that? She's like so like in inter- She asks him if he got eye contacts because his eyes look lighter to her up close. Yeah, and then she's like, she makes a comment later about like, oh, you, I can't trust him because he lies about his eyes. And I'm like, maybe because he only looked you in the eye once, once prior to today. Maybe you just don't know his eye color. Maybe, maybe you, you just give him thought the of something of the else. Doubt. Maybe you're crazy. Mm-hmm. Like, and to be fair, she's not. His eyes did in fact change color. But I think in my mind, where I'm coming from with this is just any normal person would not question things the wouldn't way that Wouldn't be like, does. oh my god, are you wearing contacts? And him go, oh no. Like, I would just be like, oh, he must have had a shadow mm-hmm. over his face last time just and I didn't something. realize it. Or, yeah. oh, maybe it was the lighting last time. Not, you're lying to me about wearing contacts and I don't like liars. Yeah, I'm like, girl. You sound like very accusatory. And like, yeah, we know later on that she's right, but you need to think of like a normal person in a situation like this. If I sat down in class next to someone, I wouldn't automatically be like, you're lying about your eye color because you have something to gain from that. Yeah. It's like, why? What is the point? But we see There's another no point. We see another great example of that though in the next chapter, which is Phenomenon. Do, 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 do. I can't. Good I God. Can't, I can't do it without doing Menomena. that. Phenomena. Do, 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 do. Anyways. Um, we used to have like a little Christmas thing yeah. that shook <laughs> to that song. Do, 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 do. Menomena. Oh my God. <laughs> this little banjo and a Santa hat. <laughs> but for chapter three, uh, the first note that I have here is Bella finally gets hit by the mini. <laughs> because this is the first time anything actually happens in this book. I know we've talked a lot about the first two chapters, but just nothing happens in them, really. She meets... I don't think it's that they're long, I just think it's that they're tedious to get through. They're long because nothing's going on. They're very long for the amount of nothing that happens in yes. them. Her going, I'm smart, like, I'm not as good as everyone else because I'm pale, but I'm better than everyone I've met. That's her mentality, and mm-hmm. I... That's her mentality, and I'm not... I'm not here for it. No. She she gets up, and she is dreading the fact that it is snowing out. She hates it is snowing. The day before, the snow turned to rain, and so it's icy, and she hates it. And she she makes a comment about how, great, I could barely walk when it wasn't snow. And I'm Mm -hmm. like... That's not endearing. No, it's not. And she, for somebody who is so observant when it comes to Edward and the Cullens, she doesn't notice that her dad put snow chains on her tires until she gets to school. And like, then she almost cries in front of everyone. And I'm mm-hmm. like, pull your, pull like, your you don't even like together. your dad. You've been nothing but negative towards him the whole time. Mm-hmm. I think she, like, maybe the reason she gets so emotional is because she feels bad for the way that she's treated Charlie. She's like, oh, wow. I was kind of a jerk interrogating him about the car, making him feel like, oh, the car wouldn't be good enough, but it's actually, like, great to have my own car, and I didn't have to pay for it, and mm-hmm. whatever. And, like, oh, I made him sound like he can't cook. And is useless. But he puts no chains on my tires. Also, I'm sure he cooks. Like, I'm sure he hasn't, he didn't wither away while your mom was gone. It sounds like they were divorced at, like, when she was really little. Mm Mm-hmm. 
So it sounds like he's managed just fine. Yeah. And she, okay, another thing that I forgot about, I have to point it out because I didn't okay. mention it. She mentions that because her dad hasn't like repainted the rooms in the house and the cabinets and he has pictures of Bella, of Bella, recent pictures that have been sent to him of her hanging up, that that means it's so painstakingly obvious that he's still in love and hasn't moved on from her mother. And I'm like, one, what guy do you know that is like this decor? I'm going to change it because you know what? I care. I I genuinely care about home decor. Not many. How many guys do you know that are going to be like, oh, I'm going to repaint all of the cabinets a different color than what my ex-wife painted them because of the color? No, guys are going to be like, oh, the cabinet accidentally snapped in half. Yeah, I guess I'll like glue it back together or I'll replace the cabinet and I'll paint that one and eventually it'll wear to like... <laughs> that's not even it. Like too, though, that like that's just most people. Most people are like, oh, the cabinets function unless I'm buying a brand new house i'm not changing them yeah and that's i don't know that's it's just a, a big normal, commitment a normal thing for and having to do. pictures of your daughter on your wall does not mean you're in love with your ex-wife like no. it's maybe you just want to have pictures of your child that means he loves you bella but you're too stuck up and in your own head to like bella maybe be you should do person. a little bit of stretching before the next time you try to reach that far because that was just ridiculous but anyways i can't stand her <laughs> um, she gets to school she notices the snow tires and despite being unobservant she notices that Edward is four cars away from her exactly, and then she notices a minivan coming towards her that she didn't notice before. And in the, in the midst of the minivan, so like she notices that Edward's there, and then she says, in the midst of all the chaos, she's like, there was a lot of chaos and I noticed like three things or whatever. One, Edward Cullen was staring at me, eyes wide in horror, four cars away, two, something else, three and most prominent a minivan was barreling straight towards me and i'm like you noticed a stupid boy over a minivan barreling at you to kill you are you kidding like bella is just noticing all the wrong things but she so she, she has no survival instincts no she just stands there closes her eyes as edward rushes towards her obviously with his vampire speed that she doesn't know about yet he saves her they get crushed in between the cars she hits she, her Head. She hits her head, and then immediately after he lifts the car off of her, she's like, how did you do that? And he's like, you hit your head pretty hard. And she won't take that as an answer. And again, it's one of those situations where I know that she's right, but if you had just hit your head and you can feel, because she mentions that her head hurts, and he tells her she hit her head, but she's like, no, there's no way that I imagined what I saw. You have to have been going too fast. Yeah, no, me, I'd just be like, oh my gosh, I must have hit my head harder than I thought, or like, Maybe you were closer than I thought you were. Everything happened so fast because I just almost died. Mm -hmm. And she's annoyed that people are crying around her. Because they think she's dead. They think she's dead. And she's annoyed that she can hear people crying. And I'm like, Bella, you, <laughs> you amaze me. You truly do. <laughs> Chapter four. <laughs> Chapter three. Bella finally gets hit by the minivan. That's basically it. But she tries to question him while they're stuck between the car. He's like, I'm, you're, you're seeing things. I don't know what to tell you. She demands an explanation and he's like, you can't, like, you can't tell anybody basically. Which is a really weird thing. Like, if you want to be inconspicuous with this whole thing, just be like, I don't know what you're talking about. You hit your head. You I don't know what you're talking story. about. Are you okay? I really, I was standing next to you. I swear. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know. Immediately. Because he does a little bit later, but he just, he's inconsistent with his story. And I think too, for a point in her corner, he's inconsistent and very conspicuous. Yes. I don't know how Edward survived 70 years without being caught. He's very bad at pretending to be human. Yeah. But, you know, stay lovey. Like, literally, the whole conversation is like, oh my god, you got here too fast. No, I didn't. I was next to you. No, you weren't. Yeah, I was. No, you weren't. All right, yeah, just don't tell anyone, please. Like, that's... And there's, like, the promise of an explanation later on, and so she agrees to keep her mouth shut. The cars are pried apart. The EMTs come. Edward doesn't have to ride in, in the ambulance because he knows Dr. Cullen, but he tells them all. He makes sure to which, tell everybody. Which, to be everybody. fair, the paramedics... Oh. The paramedics and EMTs, the people whose job it is to strictly do transport, personally know the doctor, a surgeon. Mm -hmm. And like, a surgeon of what? Yeah. What kind of surgeon is he? And why is he responding to a very minor car accident where no one was actually hurt? 
Who knows? Other than the fact that, like, it's his son. Mm -hmm. But he makes sure to tell everybody that she hit her head very hard. He's doing the collateral damage. Is he the only doctor? Because why would he be the one to respond to this? Is he the only doctor? And then this is where we meet Tyler, I'm pretty sure. I don't think that he really has come up before. But he's the one who drove the minivan. He's very apologetic. They get to the hospital, and she's very insistent that she's fine. And they, you know, do all the checks. Tyler's super apologetic, as you would be. And he has a normal reaction, because he asks... How did you survive? And she goes, Edward pulled me out of the way. He goes, oh, where was he? Because I didn't see him. She goes, he was standing right next to me. And he goes, oh, okay. I guess it all happened really fast, so I wouldn't know. A normal human reaction to somebody saying, hey, you're wrong. This person was right next to me the whole time. In the middle of a car accident, like not just any. Not just like any time. He has a normal reaction, everything like that. Edward comes in first. If I were Edward, I would have just dipped, like gone, I know, I bye. I'm like, all right, bye, but. I'm not having this discussion again. But I think like you said, he wants to make sure she's not dead because sip, sip, if not. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like a fine wine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> sip, sip. But uh, Edward comes in first and she immediately is, she's so thankful that he's there. She's so, she doesn't want to talk to Tyler at all, even though she's mad at Edward. So she's like, Edward's here, so I could talk again. Edward's here, so I need to ignore all of my friends. She pretended to fall asleep to stop talking to Tyler. Like, she's she's horrible. Oh my god. Tyler, who feels so, so bad. Like, imagine almost hitting and killing someone with your car. Mm -hmm. And they, like, actually got hurt. You know, Mm -hmm. you didn't outright hit them. But they they got hurt hurt. and are in the hospital. And Tyler definitely has it way worse. Mm -hmm. He's got, like, cuts all along his face and the Mm -hmm. side of his head and Mm -hmm. forehead. Well, because when Edward dropped the car, all the glass shattered it was fine before then but edward had to lift up the car to help her yeah and didn't care about who was in the car nope but so he should why, my question why did edward help her I like why know. did why didn't edward just like pro- honestly this is gonna sound bad he is a bad vampire because as a vampire i feel like you've lived so long you've killed so many people we know mm. edward's killed people wouldn't your mentality just kind of be like this person's a problem for me because their blood is so tempting oh fate is gonna solve it and hit her with but, a car. Okay, I'm I'll just say, gonna run away. But one thing I'll say though is, I think, I don't know if this gets brought up later at all, but I think the it, the reasoning implied is that if she had died and started bleeding, he really wouldn't have been able to resist himself. Right, as soon as I saw the car going towards her, out, run in the opposite direction. Right, he should have, but. That's what know. made for a much shorter book and a much <laughs> better one at that. <laughs> But Dr. Cullen then comes in. Uh, Bella is so... <laughs> she's, like, so mad that they look alike for some reason. She it's just, just like, so, the paleness like, un- that looks like. She just like. acts so annoyed by them, like, being related. And then uh, Dr. Cullen essentially corroborates what Edward said, where she kind of mentions... Because she's trying to give Edward a little bit of sly sass, where she's like, oh, yeah, I hit my head so hard. And Dr. Cullen is... Whatever he says it sort of implies that... You hit your head. You don't really know what happened. Edward, yeah, like, he's like, oh, yeah, what happened? She's like, I don't know, I just, whatever. Edward got to me so fast, and clearly Edward and Dr. Cullen have already talked, because Dr. Cullen says, yeah, well, Edward was right next to you. You're lucky he pulled you out of the way in time. You Mm -hmm. hit your head really hard when you fell, by the way. Here's some Tylenol. Immediately, Bella's suspicious of him, too, which, again, she is correct. Not a normal thing to do. Just not a normal no. thing to do. But yeah, she immediately is like, oh, the doctor knows something. He's in on this. I can't believe this. But she gets dismissed and immediately is like, Edward, we need to talk. And he does not want to Edward talk. Edward does not want to talk. He's like, I'm all set. I'm going to stay here with mm-hmm. my adoptive father. Mm-hmm. After after the doctor, too, also told her that all of her friends are in the waiting room. Her dad is in the waiting room. Like, everybody is waiting for her. And she's like, the first thing that I need to do is talk to Edward. I need to shake this boy down. Yeah, she's like, yeah, I need to be Sherlock right now. I need to solve this case that doesn't exist. And so she pulls him aside and she's like, what was that? And again, he's like, I don't really know what you're talking about. He try, he does in this scenario try to make her sound crazy because he's like, oh, you think I lifted a car off of you, Bella? Yeah, But right. he doesn't stick to it. No. Because- she's like, yeah, I do. And he's like, oh, okay. <laughs> like, <laughs> so you did see. <laughs> Immediately he switches it up to, well, no one's going to believe you. And it's just like, Dude, that is the biggest tell that something happened that you're yeah, not Yeah, rather than to. like, you really think I lifted a car? Yeah, I do. Well, I don't know what you think I have superhuman strength. That's insane. Are mm. you sure you're okay? Should I get 
the doctor. Yeah. Like, that's what you should be saying. And instead, he's just like, no one's going to believe a liar like you. Yeah. He's like, oh, Bella, how naive of you. Tries to get him to actually talk about it. He's like, well, I hope you enjoy being disappointed. And then walks away because he can and she's so mad about it and she she does make a she point feels to like mention, he owes her something and i'm like he just saved your life kind of cut your losses and be done she does make a point to mention that she, whenever she gets really angry she almost starts to cry as well and so she's just standing in this hallway about to cry just fist balled up in a rage and like i know the feeling i know the feeling of being so frustrated that you oh, just feel sure. like you're gonna lose it and start crying but like she cries over Everything, it sounds everything, like. everything comes up and she's like, I'm so mad that I'm going to cry. And it's just like, girl, I don't know. And I'm like, sometimes it's like pure rage and fury. Mm -hmm. A lot of this just sounds like a temper tantrum though. I know. I'm like, girl, I don't know what to tell you. Maybe you're just depressed, but. <laughs> I mean, we can talk about that in book two because yes. she clearly needed attention that Of course. She was not given. No. Uh, and then she goes out to the waiting room. Her dad is there. All of her friends are there. She avoids them <laughs> because she doesn't want to talk to anybody about yeah, she. Yeah, she just just nearly died and she's like oh i don't want to talk to my friends about it girl she's awful but she gets in the car with her dad and he goes oh i told your mom and she's annoyed by this he's like you went to the hospital to i don't know probably this this hospital's version of the icu because they thought you might you know be ER, er i would something. say but he's like they thought you might be internally bleeding you just got hit by a car i told your mom and she's like how could you betray me like that charlie why would you ever tell my mom that i almost died today like because what if you had hit your heart really bad had internal bleeding and actually died do you know how much worse that would be of like so i sat outside the room for six hours and waited while our child died and didn't let you know that anything was even wrong exactly and she's just she's and that's just, just what you do you notify parents when a kid's hurt which she is she is a kid mm -hmm. you notify their parents exactly and so she she feels betrayed she calls her mom and gets that sorted out she never really talks about her conversations with her mom at all and she talks about the emails and writes them out but then when we get to this conversation with her mom even though she made a big point in chapter one to talk about how there's a landline phone in her room so she can talk to her mom she just skips over the conversation entirely she's just like my mom was hysteric and i calmed her down but it's fine now <laughs> Which is really weird because she talks about being so close to her mom, but like even in later books, like one of them, I don't remember if it's the, th I think if it's the third one or the fourth one, it may mm -hmm. be the fourth one. Mm -hmm. She goes to Arizona mm -hmm. or maybe it's Florida. Maybe her mom moves to Florida. Maybe. Wherever her mom lives, she goes to visit with Edward and like it barely even, they barely touch upon like her time she spent with her mom. Mm -hmm. It just like, I don't know. It doesn't add up, frankly. And then the last line of this chapter is that was the first night that i dreamed of edward cullen here we go <laughs> oh also so the whole time she's like i'm fine i'm fine i'm fine and charlie's like here's some ibuprofen here's some like i'm gonna give you a prescription for like big strength tylenol take it if there's any pain she's like i'm fine i'm fine i'm fine and then later she's like all right i had a really bad headache so i took some ibuprofen best sleep ever and it's the first time i ever dreamed of edward yeah. like she just like she's and i'm so, like wow so the doctor did know she's so unwilling to admit that anybody else might know better it's just laughable truly it's frustrating yes uh, but yeah, so she, that's where the chapter ends, so we don't see the dream yet, but this is where it really kicks off, folks. This is where it all, it all goes down. But I and guess we overall, have to read it. Yes. <laughs> what were your thoughts, I guess? Like, what were your overall thoughts about the first three chapters? So, I remember being in middle school, and I'm, I'm 23 now. So I remember being in middle school, and I love this book. I mm -hmm. loved it. I went to the opening, like, night of, like, merchandise from Hot Topic with friends, <laughs> and like, I saw it in the theaters. I was so excited for the movie to come out because I saw the trailer for the movie and I rushed to read the book before the movie came out. And I loved the books. And now looking back, I'm like, oh my god. Like, I see why my dramatic, like, 13-year-old self was so into them. At 23, Bella's just like a spoiled little brat. Mm -hmm. And I hate her. I hate Bella. I hate Edward. Edward has a bunch of red flags. Mm -hmm. And like, looking forward at the things that I know are to come, I just know they're gonna make me dislike both of them so much more. And I'm like, honestly, was really excited to start reading. And now I am not looking forward to reading these at all. Because mm -hmm. like, God. I think this makes me really hopeful that Midnight Sun, like the, the official version of it when it comes out, is going 
going to be like a very well constructed book because I feel like looking back on these, I have a nostalgia for them, but oh yeah, definitely. I just I, I'm not really enjoying it so far. I I am enjoying kind of picking it apart, which I think is kind of mean, but. I, I do enjoy that sort of thing of like I pick the, apart the every drama. book I read. Yeah, the drama of it all. That that's really fun to get into. But overall, I definitely see why I did stop liking it. And I think I would have stopped liking it whether or not it was like a big oh, thing uh, yeah. for people to make fun of. I think as you get older and mature, like it's very easy to look at these and be like, wow. <laughs> yes, exactly. But as a kid when you're young and impressionable, it's like oh. It all seems like it makes sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Especially how fast paced, like, some of the chapters are so slow paced, but others, like, with her automatically being, like, oh my god, there's, because, like, you know Edward's a vampire from the cover. You know, you know it from the synopsis mm -hmm. that it gives you, a little summary, whatever. Yeah. You know it's coming. So, like, the fact that she jumps into, like, weird things about the Cullen family so quickly, as a kid, it's like, good, you're moving past all the fluffing crap, like, I don't need this. And now as an adult, I'm like, I need that. I need more proof mm -hmm. that this dude's a vampire. Like, I need the lead up. Yeah, I need the lead up because it doesn't make sense for her to be questioning mm -hmm. all of this stuff mm -hmm. when, like, naturally, I feel like the human brain, mm -hmm. you're meant to understand your version of normal and to expect that to continue. And to, like, try to mold your reality around that. If there's <laughs> something that doesn't make sense to you, your brain is going to try to find a way for it to make sense. Usually. Yeah. Based off of things you know, like, I don't know, like, oh my god, Jade just appeared out of thin air. Oh, she must have been just around the corner. I must have just not seen her when I first walked in the room. Right, it would be one of those That's things. normal. And I guess the way that, in my mind, the way that I would put it is that when I was a tween, I really enjoyed the romance part of it, and so I wanted yeah. to skip past all the lead up. But as an adult, I think I would really enjoy, like, a thriller version of this, where a lot of the book is her questioning her own sanity. Yeah, that would be good. Mm -hmm. And even the romance, like, the romance part of it, because I didn't really, I don't know, I read this before I had even even had my first kiss or had a boyfriend or anything had a guy say he liked me mm -hmm. ever so like reading this i was like oh that's what every girl wants every girl wants to be the exception every girl wants to be the one that's desired and now like looking back at this his first attraction to you was that he literally wanted to eat you mm -hmm. that's a huge red flag you woke up to him you woke up to this dude that you hardly know. In your bedroom watching you sleep. That is weird. Mm -hmm. Last time, the first time you ever saw him, he was so rude to you. And you were just like, oh my god, I'm in love. I've met guys like that at parties. You know what I think? Wow. What Loser. A jerk. Bye. <laughs> yeah. No, it's just one It's of those. just not. It's not. No. But I think that's kind of why it appealed to, like, the bookworm girls. Because I'm not saying that all bookworm girls didn't have boyfriends in middle school, but, like, we bookworm girls a lot of people, did okay. not have boyfriends in middle school. Well, another thing is, too, like, a lot of YA books, and this is a criticism of young adult books everywhere because there's almost always a love interest there is if not always at least 50 percent of the time they're talking about kids that age having sex a lot of people don't date in high school a lot of people aren't sexually active in high school and i feel like people are just assuming it and i don't know once you were in the dating pool, you were in the dating pool. But it's like, they all dated each other. Like, everyone that was like, oh yeah, I'm ready to date. They just kind of bounced around their little dating group of, like, dating each other. Mm -hmm. And it was like, I feel like not as many people are dating in high school as a lot of YA authors mm -hmm. assume. Well, and I don't know like, why they assume it, because... I think more so in high school, like, people are more apt to date. But I, I, especially the way that I think about it was, like, we were in middle school when this came out. In middle school, people aren't dating, really. Like, people have crushes, and they're, they're going to dances with each other but you're in middle school what are you gonna do drive i don't think so <laughs> like i don't know yeah i just feel like a lot of ya novels they just assume that everyone's dating everyone's doing all these things mm -hmm. and like there are a lot of people that, that graduate high school and still haven't had their first kiss mm -hmm. and that's fine mm -hmm. and like i don't like that a lot of young adult books make that sound like it's Abnormal. oh you're far and few if you're if you're not doing this mm -hmm. you're not normal like yeah. if you're not tragically obsessed with your boyfriend at 16 years old you're not normal because mm -hmm. like yikes, yeah. yikes <laughs> it's indeed. not sending a good message to people but that's yeah. what i have to say about the 
first. Not that they're dating yet. No. Spoiler, they date later on if you didn't know. If if you were hoping for all the hot goss as you were reading through the book for the first time, I'm so sorry. We (laughs) This isn't it for you. (laughs) We we really spoiled that one for you. But yeah, I think that's gonna do it for this episode. Hey guys, Jay jumping in here again. Just wanted to say if you enjoyed what you heard today or if you're interested in hearing more from us, please feel free to follow us where if you can, wherever you're listening to this podcast right now, uh, as well as on Instagram and Twitter at Red Flags ATP. Uh, thank you so much. We will catch you next time. Bye! Great. <laughs>